Secret File Hollywood is a 1962 crime melodrama set in the movie capital of the world, telling the story of a man lured into the desperate world of celebrity tabloid journalism. Directed by Ralph Cushman, this movie stars Robert Clark, Francine York, and John Warburton. In Hollywood, Maxwell Carter is a private eye who pays the bills by photographing cheating spouses in the act. On one of those jobs, an innocent bystander is shot with Max's gun, and Max loses his detective license. But he's hired to utilize his skills in a new career, as a paparazzo for one of LA's most notorious scandal rags. His first job is trailing influential Hollywood director James Cameron. Different James Cameron, we'll call him Jim. Jim's wife is on a prescribed vacation upstate when Max finds Jim conducting some after-hours casting on the couch. When the publication of those pictures lead to tragedy, Max finds himself under investigation once again. Can he prove his innocence and uncover the big boss that's profiting off secrets in La La Land? Secret File Hollywood tells its story like those cautionary films of the 20s and 30s, message movies that excited their audiences by shining their lights on the lure of sin, temptations in society that threaten to pull God-fearing folk towards damnation. Cautionary tales offer a morality pitch, with a couple of hints of forbidden fruit, and sometimes it was hard to tell which one was being the Trojan horse for the other. Either way, they could draw a crowd in their time, but usually the filmmakers were more concerned with preserving the message than constructing a solid movie. For this movie, a movie about celebrity scandals and the people who chase them, there's not a lot of scandalous activity on screen. Since the gossip mongers are the bad guys, their targets aren't doing enough on screen worth gossiping about, which leaves the gossipers to entrap their targets in headline-worthy poses. The filmmakers wanted to warn moviegoers about the dangers of the gossip industry, at a time when plenty of ink was being spilled about Elizabeth Taylor's latest marriage, or George Reeves' suspicious suicide, or anything about Marilyn Monroe. So, does this movie offer anything for those who actually like to watch people behaving badly? Well, as Max's handler, Francine York wears a lot of form-fitting dresses and beachwear in her apartment. There's also a nightclub performance by this flamenco dancer around minute 60. Quite a few people get shot in this movie in that bloodless TV movie serial way, with final words and everything. As a movie, this feels closer to 50s television than 40s war, and watches like it was prepared for general TV audiences. Secret File Hollywood was one of Crown International Pictures' early offerings. They started as a sub-distributor, helping independent producers like Roger Corman get their films into mid-level movie markets. In 1959, Crown started buying up movies of their own to rent out to movie screens. Ralph Cushman would direct one more movie after Secret File Hollywood, and under his birth name, Rudolf Cusimano. Cusimano was also his professional name as a TV and film editor, cutting together such projects as Moonwolf, Teenage Seductress, and Baby Need a New Pair of Shoes, a film previously featured here on Curse of the 100. In his 1996 autobiography titled To Be or Not to Be, a film actor's odyssey, Robert Clark regaled on many of the B-movie productions he worked on over his five decades in film. His most enduring stretch of films were his lead roles in 50s sci-fi standards such as Man from Planet X, Beyond the Time Barrier, and The Hideous Sun Demon, which he also wrote and directed. When that movie was redubbed into a comedy in 1983, he would provide new dialogue alongside his son, veteran voice actor Cameron Clark. Francine York made her debut in Secret File Hollywood and would team up with Cushman for his follow-up film Wild Ones on Wheels. But her big break would be the Jerry Lewis comedy It's Only Money. York would appear in five more Jerry Lewis films, including The Patsy, The Nutty Professor, and Cracking Up. She would parlay that into steady work in television and film throughout the 60s and 70s. She played Marilyn Monroe in the 1992 film Marilyn Alive Behind Bars, a completion of the previously unfinished 1981 horror film Scream Your Head Off whose footage was cut into the 1985 anthology Night Train to Terror, also previously featured on The Curse of the 100. So, how do you get through this movie? You don't have to be on board with the film's message to enjoy Secret File Hollywood. Most cautionary films are enjoyed ironically. Aspiring MST riffers have plenty to work with here, even if you ignore that a guy named James Cameron is in the movie. 
But to those that are happy to just watch a B-movie, this is an old-fashioned melodrama where the stakes are set in black and white.